Woodycraft shut down today. Today was the last day of Woodycraft. Uh, Hitch, if you don't know, I, I had this Minecraft server. It was pretty popular. At its peak, it was one of the top like four or five Minecraft servers in the world. And um, I don't know. For, people started shifting away from the kinds of games that we had to uh, mini games. And our mini games, I had two problems. One, as hard as we tried, they just never seemed to be wildly popular. Uh, our player base didn't like them. They'd play them for, they'd be excited about them for like two weeks and then they'd fall off. And right. um, two, they weren't, they didn't make any money for us. So these, they were just like loss leaders that no one played. And was like, well, fuck, you know? <laughs> Whereas like uh, Hypixel, for example, managed to monetize theirs. So um, uh, over time, like the player base just shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. And it was like, all right. Oh, and then um, Mojang changed the EULA so that you couldn't sell the kinds of things that made Woodycraft profitable. Right. And uh, it was just like, it was almost a graceful way to wrap it up. It's like, all right, you know, the EULA changed, the, the, the server's been headed in that direction anyway. Let's, let's call it a wrap. And um, so in the springtime, I made it so that we didn't sell anything because I didn't want to be like selling things up to the day we shut down. And uh, here we are entering the fall, and uh, I didn't know when the last day was going to be. I could have looked it up, but like, the there were different. Woodycraft at its peak had like twenty servers, and uh, different ones were like expiring on different timelines. We added and removed them, and uh, it was going to be at a point where like, a server that all the traffic went through went down, and that happened today. Like the Bungie server expired or something, and um, I don't know. It was a really good experience. I. Uh, it grew me as a person. It grew my bank account. I appreciate that about it. Um, and, uh, and a lot of players enjoyed it. I don't know. Overall, I, did, I, I don't regret Woodycraft first. Sometimes I, like, I have this in my head. Like any business that's not in business anymore is a failed business. But I don't think that's a good measure. Um, I grew personally. I grew financially, emotionally. I'm, I'm, I'm richer in every measure for having done it. And... Um, it was it was a win so but it's over now and that's uh that's that i don't know is it yeah so now i think the same i think literally the same thing happened with the optic craft if i'm i i don't i was never into minecraft or especially on like the behind the scenes server side of things but uh, -huh. uh hearing hearing hector and uh and will talk about it because those those were like the two big people that did the optic craft um as far as personalities, I think they they said like the same the same thing happened after that. It was like a monetization uh, thing. What actually happened with that? So they changed the kinds of things that you could sell. And Optocraft, I'll tell you, is it, it's mostly a faction server. And factions was also the biggest thing in Woodycraft. It's a game mode where, like, you probably know the the, the smallest thing about Minecraft, where you kind of build yeah. things and mine it, etc. Well, in factions, you would build these like bases or forts. And then it'd be protected so other people couldn't just dig it. They had to make these cannons that shoot it. And with that basic thing, you mine it, you collect your things, you put them in a fort that's hard to raid, and you sort of get wealthier and more powerful and etc. And you can combine two like low-level sets of armor to make it a higher set of armor. And um, uh, people would play this game for about four to six months nonstop, around the clock right? Australians are valuable because they can protect your base while you're at school. People would pretend to be your friend for six or eight weeks to get access to your base and then rob you blind. People would just like, like, oh my God, they, they, there was a, there was the in the game stuff. And then the, what we had a real hard time shutting down was the out of game stuff. And, um, uh, you know, people would like DDoS and SWAT each other. They would send like people sent, of course, the SWAT team pizzas, bouncy castles uh sailboats and cranes to each other's houses like as a way of like oh you're, you're gonna raid my base well there's a bouncy castle in your backyard now bitch you know? <laughs> how do you like that Jeez, <laughs> real one <laughs> and um uh and that stuff like we would ban all the time for it but it got hard to ban people um they would just come back on like broken and cracked accounts and and start fucking with people and then we had to ban on like the shadow of threats, you know, people would be like, I don't know, you're going to get ramrodded, you're banned, 
ramrodded? Like, what the fuck? Dude, I don't know. It sounded like DDoS to me. Fuck off. Like, you know, <laughs> because if it's a code, like, you can't just use dog whistles to intimidate each other and let that go by. And, um, uh, you know, so we had to, like, start getting, we had, peop we had people on staff who were hip to the lingo more so than me, who would be like, you know, yeah, that when he says he's getting jackhammered, that's a reference to like the raw hammer crew and the raw hammer crew <laughs> releases docs and like, oh my God. yeah, yeah. And it was, it was like, yeah, it's that, that's Being a prison warden basically. Dude, it, it was tough. And, and then um, <laughs> like I had staff, like they, I had a, a young staff guy and they went after and like doxed his parents. So now his parents like social security numbers and out there and stuff. And I'm like trying to make this right. I bought his parents like, credit fraud protection services so that, you know, like, cause I felt bad, you know, like, um, because their son worked there now suddenly the parent, it was, that was one of another one of the reasons that, you know, we kind of just like, there were a couple bad actors, cyber criminals really, who were just like attacking staff and other players and stuff like that too aggressively. But, um, over uh, Minecraft, <laughs> but yeah, I, Minecraft is a dirty game, so you don't see that stuff happening in the in the the higher levels of gaming. It's only <laughs> down there where you dirty <laughs> miners, that, where, where like people, like like that shit doesn't happen in COD, like not regularly. Like nobody ever sent me a fucking crane. Um, <laughs> uh, that, that's outrageous. Like, the, it's it's it must have something to do with how much time you've got in your sandcastle, as it were. You know, we talk about the civilization games that can last uh, you know twelve solid straight hours, but uh, yeah. if in Minecraft, if your base uh, and your faction server is is a, a year old and it represents one year of your team winning more than they lose, then uh, I guess I could see the uh, I could see where you could get real upset and maybe want to send someone a bouncy castle or uh, yeah, a bunch dude, of pizzas or something. Hitch was asking him. I didn't get to the point more directly, but um, Mojang made it so you couldn't sell things that gave you an advantage in games. So we would like sell a rank, for example, where every day you'd like get a set of diamond armor, for example. And Mojang was like, nope. Now the only thing you can sell are like hats and pets that follow you and like. When you walk, there's like a trail of water droplets or shit like that. And um, factions players were not interested in that kind of bullshit. And uh, it made persistent game modes not that profitable. And like, I don't know, that combined with just how much of a pain in the ass it was to run after a while and sinking profits and stuff. It was like, you know what, all the things are coming together. It's time to wrap it up. So I kept it going for about four months on my own dime you know without selling anything and uh and today it it like i just sort of like got the emails and stuff servers suspended and donezo so uh yeah it was a good chapter but let's on to the next one it's the end of an era it is yeah so um in your life not just you know of the availability of the server you know it was like that was your whole thing like full time for how long was it years like yeah, it was years. years. I don't know. Maybe it started in 2013 or 12, something like that. I know it was in July. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little sad. Like, oh, it's too bad. And there's, like, a community that's uh, somewhat broken up about it. And, um, yeah. But, the, you know, I guess in the like, – I don't want to be a douche, but I've got in my head, like, you know, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. And, you know, that that's the case. Mojang changed the rules and – uh, it shut down. Um, I, I'm watching these other server owners like try to flip the bird to Mojang and sell the stuff they used to sell and have private launchers and all that. Like, you know, because Mojang will blacklist it. They'll make it so players can't get to your server. And now there's like a escalation war and trying to get around that. And it's uh, they changed the game. And I think Mojang's making a mistake. Uh, there are a lot of players who will be like, oh, getting rid of pay to win is a really great thing. But by taking the profit incentive out of it for server owners, like it, uh, it takes the innovation away from Mojang, right? Every year Mojang comes out with like some new flowers, some new blocks and some like bullshittery that doesn't do much for the game. And every month, high pixels releasing like Mario Kart within Mojang or like Rocket League within Mojang and like Kitty's been playing um DayZ and it looks really fun. It's in Atlanta. This is, she's like, "Oh, I'm just going to the CDC. Someone bit my arm, so I had to cut it off." 
And I was like, really? That's, <laughs> that's badass. That's Minecraft? Show me. And I'm looking, and there's this, she, on one monitor, she's got this map of Atlanta and the surrounding areas, and, and she's, you know, they're using AR-15s and stuff, and it's, 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 uh, it's like DayZ or, or, or whatever inside Is Minecraft. Is it MindZ it's, by chance? Do you know? You wouldn't I know. don't know, but, but sounds like a good guess. Yeah. You know? Dude, they do uh, amazing things. There's a civilization implementation in Minecraft that, that was super in-depth. And um, like the, I feel like what the development community is doing is a hundred times more than what Mojang does themselves. Like the development arm of Mojang is actually the community. The, Mojang just made a platform that everyone builds on top of, and like a- yeah, like like an iPhone, for example. You know, what comes with an iPhone is just bullshit. What is it like a calendar and a phone and messaging and stuff? You know, it, yeah, it's not until somebody makes Pokemon Go and you know maps and shit like that it's made like half a billion dollars by the way pokemon go it's like the 13th most used app in the world app in the world or something like that 